Hello, I'm Wendy from 3D Worldwide. In this video, we will learn how to create a flag and animate it with the cloth modifier. The cloth modifier will simulate cloth movement as it interacts with the collision object, wind and gravity. But before we start, let's go to Customize, Unit Setup, and we'll select Generic Units, then press OK. Also, we'll drop down to the bottom of the screen and press the Time Configuration icon. Now here in the Time Configuration and Animation, set End Time to 300, then press OK. We're going to create the flagpole first, so we'll go to the Create panel, Geometry, and then scroll down to Cylinder. We want to create it in the top viewport, so we'll just click anywhere to activate it. Then we're going to come over to Keyboard Entry. Notice here that we have X, Y, and Z axis. It's all set to zero. That's perfect. We're just going to type in radius of 2 and a height of 180. Then click on the Create button. I'm just going to zoom in so we can see it a little better. There we are. We can see it's been created right in the center of the grid. Let's go to the Modify panel. Now we're just going to scroll down in the parameters. I think we'll just leave everything here as it is. We'll go back up to the top and we'll change the name. Let's just type in Flagpole. We're going to create the flag in the front viewport, so just click anywhere. Then press Alt-W to maximize it. Now we'll go to the Create panel, Shapes, and Rectangle. We're going to place our cursor over the cylinder and just drag out a rectangle like that. I'm just going to change the color so we can see it a little easier for this video. Now in the parameters, I'll just type in Length um, 70 and the Width 96. OK. Now I'm going to go to the Select the Move tool, right-click on it, and here in the dialog under Absolute World, the X, I'll type in 48, and the Z, 135. I'll click anywhere in the viewport and then close the dialog. With the rectangle still selected, we'll go to the Modify list and we'll change the name to Flag. Now we're going to right-click on the rectangle, and from the Flyout menu, we're going to select Editable Spline. Now we'll go up to the Editable Spline subdivision level and we're going to click on Vertex. We're going to select all the vertices, right click and then from the Flyout menu click on Break Vertices. If we don't break all the vertices when we add our Garment Maker modifier, we'll end up with odd shaped or rounded corners. So we'll go over now to the Modify list. First of all we'll turn off our um, Editable Spline. We'll scroll down. And look for Garment Maker. Now look at that. Garment Maker has just converted the 2D spline into mesh. Let's go over to the main parameters and in density, we'll just boost the density up a little bit. Something like 0.27. Now we can go back to the modifier list or we'll scroll down and we'll select the cloth modifier. In the object rollout, press Object Properties. Now here in the dialog, in Objects and Simulation, we need to add our flagpole, so click on Add Objects. We'll just click on the flagpole to highlight it, then press Add. Now we have the two objects which are needed for our simulation. First of all, we'll select the flag. Flag will behave as a cloth, so we'll select cloth. Then cloth presets, we'll select cotton. All the rest of the default settings are fine. So now we can go to the flagpole, we'll scroll right down to the bottom. To collision objects and check collision objects, then OK. Let's go over to the modify stack and click on the, the small plus sign beside cloth to open the group sub object level. We'll press Z on the keyboard to zoom in. We'll select the vertices along the left hand side of the rectangle, the ones that are overlapping the cylinder, and then in group rollout, we'll click on make group, then press OK. Now in group list, press SIN node, and then from the front viewport, we'll click on the cylinder. Check the panel. Make sure that SIM node to flagpole is there. OK, we'll go back to the modify list and just click on cloth to turn it off. OK, let's scroll down to the simulation parameters. And in self collision, we'll just type in 1. This will stop the cloth object from interpenetrating. Now we're just going to press Alt-W to go to all four viewports. Just going to move this around a little like this. 
I'm going to click, click on the rectangle to open the cloth modifier and press simulate local. There we are, the rectangles are behaving like a cloth. Press simulate local again and then scroll down to selected objects and press reset state. Now we can add some external forces, so we'll go to the create panel, space warps, and press wind. Now here in the top viewport, we're just going to drag out the wind icon. I'll just press Alt W to maximize the viewport. Now I've placed my wind icon right underneath, underneath the rectangle. Now I'll go to the modify panel, and in strength, I'm going to set it to 3. And in turbulence, I'm going to type in was 1.5 and 15 for the icon size. Now I'm going to turn on the angle snap and the rotate tool. And I'm going to rotate the, the icon minus 90 degrees along the x axis. Just move it a little. Now I'm going to make a copy. I'm going to hold the shift key down and I'm going to drag a copy to the left hand side. In the clone options, I'm going to select copy, then OK. Just going to place that up there a little bit. And I'm going to rotate it again. Now we can go to the modify panel. And I'm going to change the strength to 6. And the turbulence, I'll bring it back down to 0. Let's look at all four viewports a minute. OK, now we can maximize the perspective viewport. Then I'll rotate the second width force, something like a negative 35 on the y-axis. Then I'll just go over and click on the rectangle to open the cloth modifier. And now I'm going to scroll down. In cloth forces. Now here in the dialog, we can see we have forces in the scene and forces in simulation. Click on wind and the little arrow, and that will bring our forces to the simulation. Close the dialog. Now let's go over to simulation and press the local simulation. Isn't that looking good now? Let's orbit around. I'll use the middle mouse button and hold down the, the Alt key on the keyboard. Let's turn off local simulate and we're just going to scroll down to selected objects and press set initial state. Now this is going to be our first frame for our simulation. Let's just scroll up now and press simulate. Here we can see our dialogue has popped up. I'm just going to turn off the video while we're doing the simulation. When we're back, let's press the play button, have a look. That's looking very good. See how the wind is blowing the cloth? It's very wavy, very soft looking. If you're not happy with the simulation, all you have to do is go and press Erase a Simulation, and then after that, Reset State. You can adjust the wind strength or the position of the icon. When you're happy, just make a new simulation. Let's add some materials. Press M on the keyboard, or we'll just open the material editor from the main toolbar. We're going to use a standard material. Double click to open it. And we'll change the name to flag. Now we're going to add a checker map. So we'll scroll down to maps. And drag out a checker. Double click to open it. We'll drag the node and connect it to the diffuse color slot. Now let's go over to the coordinates and under tiling, we're going to set the U to 6 and the V to 4. This is going to tile our checker map. There we are, that looks good. I just press Layout All so we can have a better look. Now we can drag the material over to the, to the flag. Click again on the flag to open it, and we're going to go to Assign Material and Show Shader Material in Viewport. We can see that's been applied correctly. Let's go back to the Material Editor. 
Now for the flag pole, I think we'll use a standard material, so I'll just drag out another standard, double click to open it, I'm going to change the name, just type in flag pole. In the diffuse color, I'm going to select a dark gray, hit OK and close the dial. I think I might bring up the specular level a little, something like 35, 40, and the glossiness will bring it up to something like 50. Now we can drag the material to the flagpole and close the dialog. That's looking good, but there's two more modifiers I'd like to add, so we'll just click on the, on the rectangle to open the modify list. We're going to scroll down to shell modifier. This is going to give us that little bit of thickness to it. Here in the outer amount, we're just going to drag it down to 0 0.1. Go back up to the top of the modify list again, and this time we're going to select an HSDS modifier. I'm just going to scroll down to Adaptive Subdivision, and here in the dialog, I'm going to choose Medium and then press OK. We've just added some more detail to the flag. OK, let's go to all four viewports. We're going to select both objects together. Go up to the main toolbar and select Groups, Group, and type in Flag, then press OK. Then we're going to rotate the flag. Then we're going to use the Mirror tool to make an instance. So we'll just go to Mirror. The x-axis is fine, Instant, and press OK. We'll drag the instance to the left. Now if we go to the top viewport, just zoom in a little. We can see that the instance has been placed right on top of the original, so let's just drag it up a little. Click anywhere in the perspective viewport, then we'll maximize it, just going to orbit around, and now we can play back our animation. I hope you've learned something from this video. Thank you for watching. Enjoy.